Today, we're going to be building a workstation from around 1999, featuring dual Pentium 3450 CPUs. This server could handle basically anything from the 1990s and is seriously awesome. So let's get started. Before we start the build, let's go over some of the parts I'll be using today, starting with this Supermicro P6DBS. This is a dual 440GX slot 1 motherboard and can handle pretty much any 100MHz frontside bus Pentium 3. Next up we have a SCSI CD ROM drive, a 3.5 inch floppy drive and a Quantum IDE hard drive. We've also got 256 megabytes of RAM, a creative sound card using the ES1370 chipset, otherwise known as the Audio PC128. And then I also have a 3Com network card, which is supposedly the best. We've also got an ATI Rage 128 Pro, which is still in this anti-static bag, so yeah. But here it is, you can kind of see it. As for the CPUs, we have a pair of Pentium 3s running at 450 MHz, specifically the model SL3CC. And last but not least, we have this beige ATX tower, which I feel suits this build perfect. Now it's time to go ahead and install our Pentium 3 CPUs. As you can see here, they slot in pretty easy and are really simple to install. Then you just go ahead and plug in the fan header and put on these little clips. Now it's time to install the second CPU. Again, following the same process, removing the clips, inserting the CPU and then putting on the fan cable and putting the clips back on. And just for some bonus points, I'm gonna go ahead and cable manage these. This won't make a difference at all, but I like it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install our 256 megabytes of PC133 memory. Although this motherboard's 440GX chipset won't take advantage of the extra 33 megahertz speed, it still will work fine and just run them at 100. Now it's time to go ahead and open up the case so we can install the components inside. As you can see here, the lid slides off pretty easy. This case is pretty tight to work in, so don't be surprised if I install stuff in a weird order. So I'm starting off with the drives here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and screw those in. And once that's done, as we can see, looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the motherboard tray from the case so I can go ahead and install the motherboard on it. And after installing the standoffs in the right place, as you can see, it just slots in. And now we have a bunch of screws to put in, so I'll go ahead and do that now. And yeah, as you can see, there's clearly a lot of screws since this is such a big motherboard. Now it's time to go ahead and install it back in the case on its fancy motherboard tray. As you can see here, it slides in pretty easy and yeah, the motherboard is installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and screw it in. And I accidentally put the screws where the outer case screws go, so just had to remove those. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my SCSI cable for the SCSI CD-ROM drive. As you can see here, it's quite a big cable. SCSI drives are a lot faster than regular IDE ones, so hopefully we'll get some more speed out of this CD-ROM than a regular drive. And this motherboard has integrated SCSI, so why not take advantage of it? I couldn't find a SCSI hard drive, so we'll just be using a regular IDE one. So let's go ahead and get the IDE cables sorted now. As you can see here, I've got a brand new IDE one. I have tons of these, so why not use it? And here we go, I'm just installing the floppy and the IDE cable now. These look good. And now I'm just going to go ahead and insert the floppy cable 
as well as the IDE cable for our quantum hard drive. This quantum hard drive is in perfect condition, I thought I should add. And look at that, I got the IDE cable around the wrong way. Next up, I'm going to go install this 500 watt Cooler Master power supply, which is a modern one. This way, it'll work reliably and won't have any faults. When I said this case was a tight fit, I wasn't lying. Look how hard it is to plug in the 20 pin power connector to the motherboard. I had to basically go around the power supply. This was not fun. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the CD-ROM's power cable. As you can see it goes in pretty easy. I repeated that process with the floppy drive and the hard drive. Now it's time to go ahead and wire up the front I.O. of the case. There's a mess of wires here, and a legend on the board, and this is all I have to go off. I could look up the manual, but yeah, I'll just figure it out based on the legend. Here we go. And done. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the cards, starting with this ATI Rage 128 Pro. This is a late model of this card, since it has a weirdly cut PCB, which is likely to reduce cost. We have the network card. This is actually really important for this machine, since I'm considering setting it up as an FTP file server, which will require a good network connection, hence why I'm using a 3COM card. I've never used one of these cards in a system before, so I'll be keen to see if it really is as good as it people say it is, but I have no doubts. Next up, we have this Ensonic Audio PCI-128. This is just a generic sound card, but will work fine, since this machine mostly isn't for games. It'll play all the Windows sounds fine, and that's all I really want it for. And there we go, all of our cards are successfully installed. And there we go, we've successfully built a dual Pentium 3 450 computer. You'll be seeing a part 2 to this video, since it's getting a bit long, where I install Windows NT 4.0 and try out some games that support the SMP architecture. Not a lot do, but one of the most notable is Quake 3. So yeah, stick around for that. That's about it from me, and I'll see you next time.